Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, we'll be going over what to do if your recap vintage computer still doesn't work. If you're not familiar with the term recapping, here's a brief summary. All computers have components called capacitors, and unfortunately, capacitors have a limited lifespan. So, in order to keep vintage computers running, it may be necessary to replace those old capacitors with new ones, and this is called recapping. And to make matters worse, some electrolytic capacitors leak electrolyte when they get old, which is an added complication we'll discuss in a moment. So if you have a vintage computer that stopped working and you ask someone for advice on how to get it working again, chances are that someone will tell you it needs recapping. Is this advice correct? The short answer is sometimes. For some computers, recapping is absolutely essential. For other models, not as much. So you take the advice, you get your computer recapped or you recap it yourself, but it still doesn't work. So what now? Well, I'm going to take you through a few important steps that just might get that computer up and running again. I have here the logic board from a Macintosh Color Classic, and it's come all the way from Canada, from the country that gave us Celine Dion, Shania Twain, Justin Bieber and Brian Adams, just to mention a few of the ones we'd really like them to take back. Canada. The land of maple syrup, wild moose, bears, and Seth Rogans. And of course, no less famous or wild is my good friend Dan, the Canadian computer collector. Hey there, Dan. Hey, I'm just happy to be a part of this. Bruce volunteered to fix that logic board, and when I said, hey, I'm sending it, he said, oh crap, I didn't think that you were serious, and then gave me a fake address. So the fact that it made it to his home is a miracle. Dan had this board recapped by a friend, but after recapping, it still didn't work. So, of course, I offered to help. Dan packed it up along with a small gift and some fine words of wisdom. And soon after, it arrived here in Australia. I then put it in the important pile, where it sat for about 12 months. Now that Dan has started with the death threats, I figured today was a good day to have a look. We're going to go through each of the steps I follow when recapping doesn't do the trick. What do you say, Dan? Shall we get started? I don't know if any of you work for Visa, but I think Bruce has been using my credit card. I mentioned earlier that some electrolytic capacitors leak electrolyte when they get old. The problem here is that liquid electrolyte is conductive, so it can work its way into vital components and create short circuits. So even after replacing the old caps, if you don't give the board a good clean, that old residue could be the reason the computer isn't working. Use a soft toothbrush and some 99% isopropyl alcohol and make sure you get all of that old gunk off the board. Once the board is completely dry, give it another try. So on the whole, this board is pretty clean, but there are a couple of little spots of gunk here. So I think I will probably drop this into the ultrasonic cleaner just to rule out any possibility that that dirt is the reason why the board is not working. This board has been thoroughly cleaned now, but it's still not working. So let's move on to the next step. I can't stress this one enough, check your work. I've had people send failed recaps to me and then I find a capacitor has been soldered on the wrong way around or the wrong capacitor was used. You don't need me to find a basic mistake like that. Go over everything you did, make sure you installed the right capacitors, make sure the polarity is correct. Electrolytic capacitors have a stripe to indicate the negative pin. Tantalum capacitors have a stripe to indicate the positive pin. Check to see that you've got nice, clean solder joints that are properly connecting the component to the pad. Make sure you soldered both sides. Give the capacitors a gentle nudge on both sides to see that they're properly secured. Now I know the person who recapped this board, and they do very good work, so I don't expect any issues like this. No harm in checking though. Okay, so the Color Classic has one, 
10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor right there. Uh, that is 106, that is the correct capacitor, and the stripe is pointing to the positive side. So that one is correct. We have two 100 microfarad 6.3 volt. Uh, they're there, positives both facing inwards, that's correct. Uh, they are the correct cap there, so that's fine. And then we have six 16 volt 47 microfarad capacitors. So there's 47, there's a 47, both with the polarities correct. We have one more right over the other side of the board here, and that is correct. And we have three down the bottom here. There's one, and two, and three. All of those solder joints look good, um, and all of the polarities are correct, and all the caps are in the right place. So in the instance of this board, uh, I don't see any fault with the uh, placement of the capacitors uh, uh, during the recapping process. If you're replacing surface mount electrolytic caps with tantalum caps, you need to be aware of the different pin size. Tantalum caps have a pin that's wider than the original electrolytic pads. If you have a trace that runs really close to the pad, the wider pin may sit right on top of that trace. In a perfect world, that trace would be insulated by the green mask on top. But during the recapping process, sometimes that mask can get damaged. If you expose the copper, you could end up with an accidental short if that capacitor pin bridges across to that copper. I have here a Classic 2 logic board, and during the cleaning process, quite a lot of the UV mask has been scraped away, and it exposes those copper traces. And I'd like to bring to your attention specifically this little spot right here next to the pad. Now, if I was to put a tantalum capacitor on here, uh, in that location there, if we flip this over, and you have a look at how wide that pin is in comparison to that pad, it would be very easy when we soldered that for that to actually make contact with that there. Bridge some solder from there across to there in the process of soldering down that capacitor. And this is something that I actually see quite a lot of the time. Uh, there are times when people send me uh, boards that have been recapped and aren't working and then I take the caps off and I find these little uh, little shorts going on um, from putting a tantalum capacitor into a spot for an electrolytic capacitor. So how do we deal with something like this? Well, we need to use UV solder mask. You'll find links in the description. Uh, and this is a green substance that you can paint on with a paintbrush like this. And we will coat that over so that it is insulated. We may as well insulate some of these others as well. Let's get them coated. And then we need to use a UV light. You can just use the sun. I actually use a UV laser. Exposure to UV light will cure this UV solder mask. With a laser, it only takes a few seconds. If you're going to put it out in the sun, maybe give it 10-15 uh, minutes, something like that. And now that that UV solder mask is cured, we can put this capacitor on and solder it on without any danger of creating an accidental short there. This board has been recapped with quite small capacitors and I don't see any accidental short circuits. If you use a hot air station, particularly on old solder joints, sometimes the joint surface gets crusty and solid, then the molten solder underneath squeezes through the crust, creating solder balls. Most of the time the balls just roll off or get washed off, but sometimes they can get lodged between the pins of an IC and create a short. Be sure to give the board a thorough search for any stray solder balls hiding in places they shouldn't be. Look around for any bent pins, particularly with chips like this 68030 CPU. If one pin gets bent enough to touch another pin, it could be enough to stop the computer from working.
This one happens quite a lot. On the underside of many of these boards, you'll find loads and loads of little resistors, capacitors, diodes and inductors. This is sometimes referred to as the bird seed. It's actually incredibly easy to accidentally knock one or more of these components off during handling. Look closely to see any evidence of a missing component. Be aware that there are some components that are missing on purpose. You tell these apart as they usually have rounded blobs of solder on the pads. If a component has been accidentally knocked off the board, you're more likely to see sharp edges on the remaining solder, and you may even see remnants of component adhesive. I mentioned electrolytic capacitor leakage back in step one, but sometimes cleaning just isn't enough. One of the unfortunate side effects of electrolyte on the board is that it accelerates corrosion. That corrosion can eat right through copper traces or destroy solder joints. Look for traces that have gone black or are covered in a light green powder. Scrape off the corrosion and see what's left. You may find a break in a trace that will need to be repaired. Check out my video on repairing broken traces for some useful tips and tricks. Looking at this board, I see a few little dark spots on a trace here. I'm going to just gently scrape off some of the mask on top. And as I do that, we reveal that we still have complete copper underneath it. I'll probably tidy that one up a little bit. It's a little bit spotty, but... I don't believe that's a break in continuity there. The top of this via here is pretty heavily corroded. Uh, I'll clean that up a bit. I am going to probably add some solder onto that. So we have some minor corrosion here, but certainly nothing that I would consider uh, being responsible for this board not working. This is a tip mainly for the analog boards of the old Compact Max, like the Mac 128K, 512K, Plus, SE, SE30, Classic and Classic 2. Over time, the solder joints can crack and become unreliable, particularly the joints on the connectors. If this happens, the best thing to do is remove as much of the solder as possible, then use some nice fresh solder to redo the joint. Get a strong magnifying glass, or a microscope if you have it, and go over the whole board looking for any problems. Things like IC pins that aren't making proper connection, cracks, burns, corrosion or trace breaks. It's slow, it's tedious, but you might just find the cause of your problems and it may even be an easy fix. Well, here we are at the end of the checklist and this board still doesn't work. Unfortunately, under these circumstances, there's no one-size-fits-all solution, and at this point you may need to seek out the help of others. Lots of old computers have problems common to that specific model. For example, if someone tells me they have a Mac Plus that doesn't work, I would recommend checking the analog board first. Check for cracked solder joints, then resistors, then diodes. If you're having trouble with an SE30, I'd suggest the problem is probably somewhere around this row of ICs, or with the RAM multiplexers. And if you're having trouble with a colour classic like this, there are a few problem areas. The first can be corroded traces around the sound chip here, but that usually results in loss of sound or a blank screen. Not a completely dead computer like we have here. The second is corroded traces or vias around the egret or CUDA chip here. For this computer, it turned out to be four rotten vias. Vias are small copper tubes that link traces from one side of the board to the other, or in some cases, linking hidden layers inside the board. Unfortunately, these rotten vias looked fine when inspected, and I only found them when checking for continuity with a multimeter. I then used some wire to re-establish the connection between the board layers.
If you get to the end of all these steps and still haven't found a solution, I'd highly recommend jumping onto the Tinker Different online forum. There are lots of clever people with years of experience repairing boards like this who may be able to point you in the right direction. Now all that remains is for me to send this working board back to Dan in Canada. It will be going back with a gift. There is a great Australian philosopher by the name of Max Walker, and he has committed his sacred thoughts to paper in this wonderful tome called How to Hypnotise Chooks. Dan, I sure hope it changes your life in the same way it changed mine. Hang on, I'm, I'm not left-handed. If you like vintage tech served up with a powerful dose of humour, subscribe to Dan's channel, The Canadian Computer Collector. How do you say about that, Dan? Bruce, love the haircut. Thank you for working on my board. I uh, appreciate you applying your skills and talent. I also trust that you will provide me with the address from the family members of mine that are missing. You can choose one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. You know, Bruce one time uh, sent me a letter in the mail, and when I opened it, uh, it was just a piece of paper that said I farted on this paper. Uh, so we've got a good thing going, I think.